Hello, William here again. This morning, starting off this video from my kitchen since it's very cold, snowy and wet outside. Okay, so this last week I purchased myself a new piece of equipment to extend my repertoire in the workshop. Um, I've had my eye on this piece of equipment for some time uh, and I've seen the results of what people are producing with this and uh, hope uh, with some experience to be able to replicate that work. So what did I buy? I bought one of these. This is uh, the Paul Howard fluting jig and it's designed uh, to do fluting work and router work on a lathe. Okay, so the, uh, the whole kit basically comes in uh, three parts, uh, all of which are set, uh, purchased separately. There's the router jig itself, um, there's the indexing plate and also a hinged base. There's uh, very little uh, assembly to be done. It doesn't come as a kit. Uh, the router jig itself uh, only has to be fitted to the, the base plate and to fit your um, router in place, of course. The router jig itself does come with a quite comprehensive manual, which Paul will uh, includes as part of the package, uh, but to be honest it's fairly intuitive to set it up, um, but you can uh, download the manuals and the instructions for all of Paul's um, equipment direct from his website um, before you make a, a purchase decision, which is quite useful of course. The router jig itself uh, I think um, will fit just about any lathe uh, and it's adjustable um, from the collar size to the height um, and the distance to the cutter and as well as having uh, a micro adjustment um, feature in the vertical plane. It's worth mentioning early on that all of this equipment which I've bought from Paul Howard has a feeling of quality about it. It fits together um, very precisely and um, locks into place with no movement um, at all. Uh, precision of course is going to be very very important particularly if you're going to use very small cutters and making very fine lattice work for instance or on a bowl or on a platter uh, you want it to look nice and accurate. Uh, it's also worth mentioning early that the um, if you're going to use uh, a guide bush here, um, that the normal length cutters um, that you might associate with your router are probably not going to do. Um, and Paul has actually um, produced a list of recommended starter cutters, a starter set, uh, which have all got um, 38 or 40 millimeter shafts on them. Uh, the guide bush here, uh, one of which Paul supplied made in oak, um, is for uh, using the router in a freehand mode um, and this will follow the contour of the piece you're working on. Uh, you can make you, these yourself out of anything, out of plastic or nylon or wood um, and obviously the shape of the end of the uh, guide bush will in fact um, dictate the type and the depth of cut that you're going to get from the router. Now whether you're going to do fluting or faceplate work on um, platters and such you're going to need a uh, indexing system and unless your lathe has got a, a very good uh, inbuilt indexing system you're going to need uh, something like this. This is the index plate that um, Paul sells uh, and it uh, has slots in there for uh, a 60 hole, 48 hole, 36 hole or 14 holes. Um, 
or of course you can use any permutations of these to produce different effects on your um, on your work. Um, the index plate of course just sits between um, your headstock and your chuck and Paul produces these and adapters for all types of um, regular spindles. As part of the indexing plate kit you get this arm which of course locks onto your lathe bed and um, a locating pin here which locks into the index plate itself. Lastly, um, I also obtained from Paul this uh, hinge kit which allows you to dismount your uh, router jig from the base plate um, supplied with it and to mount it on this which will give you the ability to do arcs um, which again I uh, can see is going to be especially useful for faceplate work. Okay, I wanted to minimise on the waffle in the kitchen and um, move across to the workshop because I believe it's better to see the equipment in context rather than just talking about it here. Uh, but before we move across there, I do want to say that I don't uh, pretend to be uh, an expert in this equipment. Um, you're seeing my uh, use of it in real time. Uh, I'm not an expert with turn Turner, having been turning for less than three years and in fact I've never used a router. Uh, I'm merely in inviting you uh, to join me on the journey with this new equipment. Okay we're out of the kitchen into the workshop um, and I'll start off by fitting the index plate and arm to the lathe because just about whatever you're going to do you're going to need that equipment on the lathe. Before we amount any equipment on the lathe, there are multiple warnings in Paul's instructions uh, to make sure that the lathe is switched off before you mount any equipment on it. Uh, I have switched mine off and unplugged it. Okay, mounting the index plate on the lathe uh, doesn't present, present much of a technical challenge. Uh, that's about it and it can either be secured in place with a chuck or a face plate. Uh, in this case I'm using a 3 inch face plate because I intend to use the spindle. That's it. I managed to do that without messing it up. Okay then to fit the arm, um, obviously it needs to be as close to the plate as possible. Um, make sure that it doesn't move and uh, immediately I can hit on a problem here and that the bolt is uh, too long and in fact I would not get the plate underneath here because of the um, we're on the end of the bed. Now I can overcome this of course quite simply by moving the headstock forward and then fitting the plate as it's intended. Okay then, so off camera I've moved the headstock forward slightly, I realigned it with the tail stock because we're going to be uh, using this first on a spindle. Okay, I'm just putting on now the wing nut which will lock it in place so okay having um, found the optimum uh, adjustments on the locating pin and the locking pin I can tighten up the jig and finally the wing nut at the bottom. <clears throat> That's not going anywhere. And this is of course the reason why you want the power turned off the lathe. If you're like me when you're operating uh, multiple tools at the same time I often switch the wrong thing on, on and off. And in this case I think it would prove to be a catastrophe. <laughs> 
Okay, for my very first attempt, I prepared a piece of uh, sapelli um, to be uh, fluted. And I've chosen rightly or wrongly, for the sake of the demonstration, an 8mm core box um, router cutter. And I'm going to go for a depth of approximately five millimeters, I think. So, okay, so I've set that to about five to six millimeters, which means I can then tighten up the router cutter. And I'm just using the guide bush that was supplied um, with the equipment. Uh, next stage, logically, um, we need to make sure that the um, router cutter is exactly along uh, the center line and the lathe. And we can do this by simply roughly adjusting and making sure it's in line with the tail stock. And if we want to use the micro adjuster that's at the top, out of camera shot. That seems to me spot on. Right, so in its most basic form, we're going to have the uh, Sapelli spindle with the uh, jig mounted um, on the base plate and the base plate directly slid along the bed of the lathe. Now I'm sure we all keep the bed of our lathes very clean anyway um, but of course if you're sliding um, the router jig along it it's very important um, that there's no dirt or bits of oil or stains or varnish or anything on there because it could end up losing accuracy in your cut. Um, what I've done in fact, I use um, dry lubricant on my lathe bed and I've used some on the base plate. Um, so it slides up and down the lathe bed very easily with one hand, almost effortlessly. Okay, so time to mount the um, Sapelli spindle on the lathe. Already I can see the banjo is probably going to be in the way, so it's a good idea to remove it if you've got something wrong. Okay, so the Sapelli blank is secure. quite tight here, but achievable. Okay, so a quick check then, the lathe switched off, index plate secure. Okay, so it's on its first outing, um, I'm going just to make the basic 14 passes over the, the spindle. So here goes nothing. Actually not a very good cut, went a bit skew here because I uh, 
failed to follow Paul's instructions and didn't have um, my hand on the base and it tilted. Also, you can see here that the depth is probably set a little too deep. Okay, I've adjusted the router cutter off camera and I need to move the index plate to the next hole. Please note that the index plate lock was not correctly set on the first pass, but I have subsequently uh, set it correctly for all the further passes. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the next position on, uh, cutting uh, slightly shallower. When I started work with the router, I did not have my dust extraction system on, uh, but this old Sapelli is very dusty indeed, so I stopped halfway through and switched it on. much better. It's about the right depth. It still feels a little rough. So that's all 14 passes completed. Uh, you can see there are in fact uh, three errors caused by uh, me moving the router out of the vertical plane and this was caused in all cases by my failure to have the hand on the base of the router. Okay then, so I've cleaned up the spin a little bit with some abrasive um, and also slapped on some sanding sealer. Um, just so you can better see the result. Um, I'm quite happy with this first attempt with this equipment and with a router. I'm not bleeding. I didn't break anything, so I'm going to count this as a win. As far as lessons learned go, um, uh, obviously the big one for me is the fact that you must keep your hand at all times firmly on the base of the router to prevent uh, movement in the vertical plane uh, because we've seen what happens if you don't do this. Secondly, um, for spindle work at least, um, you must allow sufficient space between your project and the index plate um, to work underneath it, um, otherwise you will end up uh, losing control of the router in the vertical plane. Thirdly, it's become obvious from even this simple task that uh, the type of router, router cutting, the depth of cut and the number of iterations all require to be carefully considered before you embark uh, on a project with this equipment. Uh, the equipment is certainly living up to its reputation. I'm very impressed with it. It's got a very positive feel and I'm looking forward um, to expanding my capability with this equipment in the very near future. Thanks very much for joining me on this first outing with the Paul Howard um, fluting jig. Um, in the very near future I'm going to 
attempt uh, two more projects. The first one's going to be a small uh, fluted pot in the elm, and the second one is going to be a sycamore platter with some simple uh, external flutes.